Hey guys, this is KevRev7. Today I'm going to talk to you about PPP. I'm going to show you how to set up a PPP connection um, over a WAN. I'm going to show you the configurations and I'm actually going to start by briefly talking about uh, PPP. Um, so by default, Cisco encapsulates any um, form of point-to-point -point connection using HDLC and let me show you what I mean by that so if you go show interface and then the interface that you want to see which is 2.0 in our case you'll see that uh, we have been encapsulated in HDLC so um, HDLC is Cisco proprietary it does not offer any form of authentication and PPP does offer authentication. It offers CHAP and PAP. Uh, PAP is less secure than CHAP. Um, however, it does allow you to set up a password, but that password is sent uh, to the remote destination in plain text. So uh, you be the judge on whether or not you want to use it. Um, also, once PAP has set up the connection and um, LCP is open, that's it, its job is done, it won't do anything else, it won't check to make sure the connection is uh, going to the right remote uh, destination. Uh, CHAP is different in that regard in that it checks periodically to see if it's talking to the correct destination um, host. Uh, it also uses MD5 hash. Um, so another great thing about PPP is it, it allows you to use uh, multiple network con network protocols um, network layer 3 protocols to go across the PP link and it uses NCP which is network control protocol for that specific uh, purpose uh, it uses a link control protocol to uh, establish a link uh, configure a link maintain it and then ultimately terminate the link when it's done so that's some good stuff that you need to remember uh, LCP link control protocol NCP network control protocol make sure you know that stuff um, another thing that's very important to uh, remember you want to write this down if you haven't already read it somewhere else if you're using a Cisco router and a non Cisco router you want to use encapsulation PPP if you're using two Cisco routers it's up to you you can use HDLC or PPP so that's very important to remember. Anyway, so now I've got the Mambo Jumbo out the way. Let's start the configuration. So we're on router one. So we want to uh, give it give a host name of R1, so we can call it router one. You can see over here I changed it to R1 once we said R1. Now we want to uh, enter the interface we want to uh, configure PPP on. So that's SE20 encapsulation encapsulation PPP and you'll see the state goes down the reason it goes down is because R1 is now encapsulated using PPP and R2 over here is using HDLC so R1 is PPP R2 is HDLC and that's why it's not working so we're going to change that now and how we're going to do that is go to CLR we're going to uh, escalate ourselves and let's give uh, R2 a host name of R2 so we there we go R2 we want to enter enter the interface we want to do the configuration on which is SE20 also you can see it's over here SE20 all the all the configuration notes are on this page so you can set this up at home if you would like to um, I use RIP version 2, you can use OSPF or whatever you want to use. Okay, so now we go encapsulation PPP and you'll see the link comes back up because they're both using the same encapsulation. And let's just confirm that this is working by doing a ping. So ping, we're on this PC, we want to ping to this PC. Let's do that. 172.168.1.1 first packet will time out and then the rest should work if this works and I'm assuming it will work and it does work but bam okay so now we're going to authenticate uh, 
this point to point. And we're going to do that by, uh, first off, we're going to create the username. Okay, this is very important. Username is the name of the remote router that we're connecting to. Okay, so we're on R1, the remote router is R2, destination router, R2. So username R2. Password, another important thing that you need to remember is that the passwords on both routers need to be exactly the same and they both are case sensitive. So let's do Kevin, okay? And then we want to enter the interface that we want to do the authentication on, which is SE20. Then you want to go PPP authenticate and CHAP, which I suggest you use, and then PAP. So if CHAP fails for some reason, say the other router, destination router is only using PAP and it's not using CHAP, then CHAP will fail and then PAP will work. Okay, and it's gone down because the remote router hasn't got any authentication authenticated on it yet. So we're going to change that now. Uh, exits, and we're going to do username and the name of the destination router which is R1 and the password remember we said was Kevin and then we want to um, authenticate it so it went up but uh, now we want to authenticate it so int se20 and authenticate oh, sorry ppp auth Authenticate, chap, tap. Okay, so went down and went up. So let's see if it works. It should work. Yep, it worked. Okay, so now let's look at some of the configurations. This is how you would do your troubleshooting if you have problems. So let me show you a tricky trick that you'll probably be asked on a, on a, a test at some point in your life. Okay, so if you go uh, show uh, int se20 where we where we uh, configured all these configurations, you'll see that LCP is open, which means that the link was uh, established, and then uh, this refers to the layer three NCP, and it means that um, layer three protocols RP and CDP are working. Um, the serial link is up, that means no shutdown was, was done on the link. And then you can see that the protocol is up, which means that uh, they're both using the same encapsulation. Now, if you have, if you can see the IP address over here. So say this is, this is the right IP address. And say for instance, we change dot one to dot 50. Everything would still be up, open. Everything would look as though it's working. But for some reason, you won't be able to figure out why um, you, you, you can't get any packets across um, the WAN. And that's because um, if the IP address is wrong, everything will stay up and open, but um, nothing will work. So remember that, uh, remember that this needs to be correct for, for it to work. Obviously, the IP address has to be correct, obviously, but it's tricky in the sense that uh, everything will say, every, Everything will say everything is up and working, but it, nothing will work. And you'll pull your hair out. I've done it before. So just make sure you make a mental note of that. So uh, that's a good way of checking to see that stuff's working. Another good way is if you go show run, um, you can see the password and username. Uh, you can also see where you uh, did the encapsulation, which is on serial 2.0 encapsulation PPP we're using authentication PAP and CHAP and um, if we want to say say we want to do um, encrypt this password so no one could see it very simple to do all you do is conf T and you go service uh, password encryption now when you go back um, show run you'll see it's being encrypted so I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe um, and uh, rate this tutorial. Leave comments. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a good day.